The ACC schedule, at least in principle, was released yesterday. Now, we don't have dates yet, so we don't know who goes where when, but we do have the ACC schedule out. What we know there is they had a 10 conference games plus, and then just a, a big question mark. Now, it stands to reason that what they were trying to do is force the SEC's hand and basically shout to the world, if the SEC wants to play these games like Florida FSU, Kentucky, Louisville, South Carolina, Clemson, Georgia, Georgia Tech, they can do it. Well, the SEC squashed it like a bug on a windshield because they're tired of being second to the party in these announcements. And so it looks like the ACC is probably going with that 10 conference game slate too. Notre Dame is in this thing. Notre Dame, much to the chagrin of many, including some in this building right now, eligible the Fighting Irish eligible for the ACC championship game, which will be held, by the way, either December 12th or December 19th. The biggest thing that I noticed immediately is, see that, if you're watching on YouTube, over to the right side of this graphic that Colin's showing you that the league office released, they put basically the parameters. And you see December 12th or 19th for the conference championship game. But it's not a two-division format. Since they have 15 teams here, they're just going one division, all 15 teams in the same pot, and we're just taking the best two based off winning percentage of conference games. What does that mean? Well, you know, if, for example, we've got Notre Dame playing Clemson. Well, if they were in the same division, you would have that fear that, okay, Notre Dame may end up being the second best team in this conference by a mile, but since they're parked there behind Clemson, they're not going to be able to play for a conference championship game. Clemson's going to end up being favored by four touchdowns in the conference title game. They may still end up being favored by four TDs, but it's going to be against the true second best team in the conference, as records indicate, as opposed to what you would have if you had two divisions there. I think that's the way to go this particular year uh, in the ACC. I don't know what the SEC is going to do about that. There are a lot of people on both sides of that fence. Some people think you should maintain the divisions. Some people think that you should go the alternative route. I think the SEC is going to maintain divisions. I think the ACC had a perfect reason not to maintain divisions, and it's going to work out very well for them. Some teams that I was looking at, Notre Dame, obviously. You get a bunch of really good matchups. You get Notre Dame Clemson, Notre Dame FSU. So, And I think both of those games are in South Bend. So those are really fun to think about. It's just kind of fun to think about a different world. I don't think this is going to be the new normal, by the way. Notre Dame being in a conference, don't think that's going to be the new normal. But let me tell you the team that popped right off the screen to me was Duke. The Duke Blue Devils, I want, want to set the scene for you here. You've got calamity, you've got chaos, a million other C words. And so you've got all that happening. And of course, everyone's favorite is Clemson, including myself. And then you've got Notre Dame in the mix. And then you've got the usual questions about, is Miami ready? Is Florida State ready? But then you've got Dave Cutcliffe just sitting at Duke. And he's got Chase Bryce as his transfer quarterback, formerly at Clemson. And you got a really good developer at the quarterback position. And you got a guy who is very capable at quarterback. And it just seems like the kind of world that is tailor-made, custom-made for Dave Cutcliffe to be standing there at the end of the day, finishing well into the top half of this conference. A place that Vegas odds will probably tell you he and Duke have no business finishing in. It just seems like that kind of year. I'm not going to break down Duke's depth chart for you right now, but I'm keeping an eye on Duke. NC State, if you didn't know anything about any of the teams, NC State would be the program that my attention went to the most because NC State, if you look up and down that helmet or that grid schedule that Colin showed you, it's the only program. They're the only one in the entire conference that is able to avoid Clemson and Notre Dame. Doesn't mean their schedule is a cakewalk, but Elliott did a really good feature on 247sports.com today about how just because NC State doesn't play, for example, using NC State as the example, just because they don't play uh, the two big boys, they still have Florida State, they still have Miami, they still have North Carolina, they still have Virginia Tech, Virginia. So, like, they don't play one and two, but they basically play three, four, five, six. And so it, it ends up that NC State doesn't have the easiest road to hoe. And not to mention, the whole point is we don't know what kind of program they have this year. I saw some people making a little bit of noise about them on Twitter yesterday. Now, the whole point is, um, I mean, there have been some – Fairly significant internal problems there. There have been some fairly significant roster problems there. Were those rectified overnight? And I didn't know about it. So I had to turn in my 1 through 15. <laughs> that was easy. My 1 through 15 uh, order of finish for the ACC today. Uh, I did not have NC State in the top half of the conference, despite, at least on the surface, the very workable schedule. Now, I'll tell you who 
my attention is on the most in terms of needing to prove something, and that's Virginia Tech and Justin Fuente. And they've got their chance. They've got their chance because they've got Clemson, but they've got him at home. they got Miami, but they got him at home. I know that your mind and mine kind of is still trained to think about the home environment as the classic home environment. Well, obviously that's not going to be the case this year, but at least you don't have to travel in those two circumstances. They come to you. And also, you know, everyone just kind of assumes Clemson is Clemson. Miami is Miami. Well, you don't know. With all the uncertainty out there, you don't know who's going to be on the field any given week. And so, you know, if you have your, if you have your stuff together and, you know, maybe something affects their roster, you have, you have no idea what that game looks like come game week. What if they upset Clemson at home? If you take that leap, that's a double-digit underdog situation, but if you take that leap and they're one of the ones that just end up shocking the world this year in a year where I think the world is going to be shocked on a week-to-week basis because of the nature of what we're dealing with right now, they do that? They get Miami at home? What if all of a sudden Justin Fuente, in the most uncertain of times, takes a program that everyone is uncertain about, and this is the year that they go bang? Virginia Tech's one that I'm looking at because elsewhere – they got a trip to North Carolina. They got Louisville at home. They got Duke at home. Like, they're not with the easiest. They're not with the hardest. But they're right there to where if there's going to be a year and if there's going to be someone come out of the blue, aside from Duke, who I already told you about blue. Duke, you got that. Uh, Virginia Tech is another one that I'm looking at. So just some thoughts there on the ACC uh, schedule release. We'll get dates on that eventually. And there's a lot more. We did a ton about that yesterday on 247sports.com. One of the benefits of being the league office that put out the schedule first. You get a a disproportionate amount of coverage on your conference. 